friends, Miss Danny from the Pleasant Hills Public Library, and welcome to Tuesday Tales. This week, we're going to be talking all about Halloween. Are you excited for Halloween? I know it's going to be a little bit different this year, but Halloween is still going to be a lot of fun, whether or not you go trick-or-treating or just stay home with your family. Halloween is so special because it's the one day a year you can dress up to be anything you want. Mr. Monkey decided he wanted to be a witch unicorn, and I have my witch hat on, but maybe I could be a kitty cat, or maybe I could be a, a shark, chomp, chomp, or maybe I could be a, a cow, moo. No matter what I dress up as, I'm still me underneath. And the same is true with you. No matter what costume you may put on, you're still you. So let's see. Hmm, what should I wear today during story time? What do you think, Mr. Monkey? <gasps> All right, are you ready? I'm a cat. Meow. <laughs> and now, friends, let's get our wiggles out and sing our hello song. We're going to start by waving our arms nice and big. Are you ready? Hello, everybody, and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello, everybody, and how are you? How are you today? Very good, let's clap our hands. Hello, everybody, and clap your hands. Clap your hands, clap your hands. Hello, everybody, and clap your hands. Clap your hands today. That's terrific, let's stomp our feet. You ready? Hello, everybody, and stomp your feet. Stomp your feet, stomp your feet. Hello everybody and stomp your feet, stomp your feet today. Very good. So now friends, let's see. Do you think that we can stomp our feet super duper fast? Yeah? All right. Let's try it on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three, fast! Whoa, freeze! Whew. That was really, really fast, huh, Mr. Monkey? Whew, whew. Let's do the opposite of fast. What is the opposite of fast? Hmm. Do you know? Slow. Very good. So let's do some solo stomping. <laughs> Very good. Do you think we can stomp our feet big and loud? Yeah. Let's try it. So last time we counted up to three. This time we're going to count down from three. You ready? Three. Two, one, big and loud! Whoa, freeze. That was crazy big and crazy loud. So now, let's do the opposite. What is the opposite of big and loud? Hmm. You're right. Small and quiet. So let's do some tiptoe stomping. Very good. Our first Halloween story is one of my favorites. This is Halloween, written and illustrated by Dave Palkey and read today with permission of Scholastic Press. It's pretty silly. There once was a dog named Oscar who was half a dog tall and one and a half dogs long. Because of his unusual shape and size, all of the other dogs made fun of him. Wiener dog, wiener dog, they called him, and Oscar did not like it one bit. Oh, that's not very nice at all. Oscar's mother was no help either. Every morning when the dogs walked off to obedience school, Oscar's mother stood in the front yard waving and calling out, Oh, farewell, my little Vienna sausage. <laughs> and the other dogs laughed and laughed. Most of the time, Oscar was upset by all of this, but not today. Today was Halloween, and Oscar was thinking about other things. 
All day long at obedience school, Oscar daydreamed about Halloween night, trick-or-treats, and scary costumes. When Oscar got home, he dashed upstairs to start working on his scary Halloween costume. But when he got to his room, a surprise was waiting for him. Oh, happy Halloween, my little sausage link, said Oscar's mother. I've made you a costume to wear for the trick-or-treats. <laughs> When Oscar saw the costume, he nearly fainted. It was a giant hot dog bun, complete with mustard. And guess who was supposed to fit in the middle? Oscar did not want to hurt his mother's feelings, so he decided to wear the silly costume. That night, all the dogs on the block gathered to show off their costumes, and everyone was looking quite scary. And then Oscar showed up, looking quite frank. When the dogs saw Oscar in his silly costume, they howled with laughter. <laughs> Look at Oscar, they cried. He really is a wiener dog. <laughs> Poor Oscar was so embarrassed. Wiener dog, wiener dog, laughed the other dogs as they ran off to go trick-or-treating. Oscar tried to keep up with the dogs, but his silly costume kept slowing him down. Aww. All night long, the other dogs hounded every treat they could get their paws on. So by the time Oscar got to each house, there was no treats left. Soon trick-or-treating was over and the dogs walked home past a spooky graveyard. Suddenly a horrible hissing sound filled the air. Hiss! The dogs stopped in their tracks. Then out of the graveyard rose a ghastly monster. The dogs screamed for their lives. They dropped their treats and jumped into a nearby pond. The monster moved closer. Oh, please don't eat us, cried the dogs. The monster yelled and hissed. <laughs> Sobbed the dogs. The monster jumped up and down. Somebody save us, shrieked the dogs. Well, just then, somebody showed up. It was Oscar. Because Oscar was so short, he saw something that the other dogs had not seen. That's no monster, cried Oscar, and with a loud bark, Oscar waddled to the rescue. Oscar chomped and tugged with all his might. Have you figured out who the monster really is? Rip! And there, standing in the moonlight, was a couple of ornery cats. Help! cried the cats. We're being attacked by a giant frankfurter. And they ran off screaming through the graveyard. The dogs in the pond had seen the whole thing. Now it was their turn to be embarrassed. Oh, we've been chased into a pond by a couple of cats, they moaned. But Oscar was a true friend. He leaped into the water and swam out to the dogs. Oscar's silly costume made a wonderful life raft, and the dogs climbed up. All aboard, Oscar called, and he dog paddled back to shore. When they got back to dry land, all the dogs shared their Halloween treats with Oscar. Because Oscar had been so brave, the dogs changed his nickname from Wiener Dog to Hero Sandwich. And from that night on, nobody ever made fun of Oscar again. Happy Halloween! <laughs> and now, friends, I hope you'll join me in singing a Halloween version of If You're Happy and You Know It, where we're going to pretend to be a ghost, a black cat, and then a skeleton. Are you ready? If you're a ghost and you know it, just say boo, <gasps> boo! If you're a ghost and you know it, just say boo, <gasps> boo! If you're a ghost and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're a ghost and you know it, just say boo, <gasps> boo! <laughs> I hope I didn't scare you too much. If you're a black cat and you know it, say meow, wow! If you're a black cat and you know it, say meow, wow! 
wow. If you're a black cat and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're a black cat and you know it, say meow. Wow. <laughs> and now we're going to be skeletons and wiggle. If you're a skeleton and you know it, wiggle your bones. Ooh. If you're a skeleton and you know it, wiggle your bones. Ooh. If you're a skeleton and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're a skeleton and you know it, wiggle your bones. Ooh. Our next story features lots of fun Halloween creatures. This is Little Goblins 10, written by Pamela Jane, illustrated by Jane Manning, and read today with permission of Harper Collins Children's Publishing. There's a goblin on the run. Over in the forest where the trees hide the sun lived a big mommy monster, and her little monster won. Scare, said the mommy. I scare, said the one. So he scared and he scampered where the trees hide the sun. Over in the forest where Spook Shabu lived a pale daddy ghost and his little ghosties too. Haunt, cried the daddy. We haunt, cried the two. So they hid and they haunted where Spook Shabu. Over in the forest near a gnarled oak tree lived an old mother zombie and her little zombies three. Stare, said the mommy. We stare, said the three. So they stared all together near the gnarled oak tree. Over in the forest where the fierce winds roar lived a gray father werewolf and his little wolfies four. Howl, said the father. We howl, said the four. So they howled and they growled where the fierce winds roar. Over in the forest where the shadows come alive lived an old mother mummy and her little mummies five. Moan, said the mother. We moan, said the five. So they moaned and they groaned where the shadows come alive. Over in the forest in a hovel made of sticks lived an old mother witch and her little witchies six. Cackle, screeched the mother. We cackle, screeched the six. So they crowed and they cackled in a hovel made of sticks. Over in the forest in a mossy green heaven lived a scaly father dragon and his little dragon seven. Breathe, said the father. We breathe, said the seven. So they breathe flames of fire in that mossy green heaven. Oh my goodness. Over in the forest by the graveyard gate lived a bony father skeleton and his little skellies eight. Rattle, said the father. We rattle, said the eight. So they rattled and they ran by that graveyard gate. Over in the forest near a tall dark pine lived a furry mother bat and her little baddies nine. Swoop, cried the mother. We swoop, cried the nine. So they swooped in the shadows near the tall dark pine. Over in the forest in a deep green glen lived an old father goblin and his little goblins ten. Leap, said the father. We leap, said the ten. So they leaped and they laughed in the deep green glen. Over in the forest where the trees hide the sun, the big mommy called to her little monster one. Trick or treat, asked the mommy. Treat, cried the one. So they skipped off together for some Halloween fun. Next, let's do a classic rhyme about pumpkins and Halloween, the five little pumpkins. You can do it along with me by putting out your five fingers on one of your hands. Are you ready? Five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late. The second one said, there are witches in the air. The third one said, but we don't care. The fourth one said, let's run and run and run. Fifth one said, I'm ready for some fun. Then ooh went the wind and out went the light. And the five little pumpkins rolled out of sight. Our last book is a countdown book, just like our last rhyme. This is 10 Orange Pumpkins, written and illustrated by Stephen Savage and read today with permission of Penguin Random House. I wonder where all these pumpkins are going to go. 
Let's make sure we have 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 orange pumpkins fresh off the vine tonight will be a spooky night. Yikes! There are nine. So what happened to that pumpkin, that 10th pumpkin? It's the scarecrow's face now. Nine orange pumpkins sit outside the gate. Which one will the mummy choose? Hmm. Now there are eight. And if you look closely, you can see the mummy wrapped his pumpkin too, just like him. Eight orange pumpkins beneath the starry heaven. Thunder clouds come rolling in. Splash! Now there's seven. Oh dear, the lightning struck a pumpkin. Scared the kitty cat too. Hmm. Seven orange pumpkins ripe for trick or treats. Something sweet is in the air. Boo! Now there are six. So our ghost friend used a pumpkin to make a pumpkin pie. Six orange pumpkins out for a drive. Watch out, there's a bump ahead. Splash! Now there are five. Uh oh, it's like those alligators are pretty happy to have a pumpkin. Five orange pumpkins stranded on the shore. Yo, ho, oh, ho, oh, a pirate ship. Hark, now there are four. So they're taking one as treasure. Four orange pumpkins by an old oak tree. Owl swoops down on silent wings. Whoosh! There are three. It's a pretty strong owl, huh? Three orange pumpkins and a pot of witch's brew. This will add a tasty touch. Poof! There are two. So she added it to her potion. Two orange pumpkins, a sticky web is spun. Look who's crawling closer now. <gasps> now there's only one. So the spider spun a web on the pumpkin as well. Oh my. One orange pumpkin, nowhere to be seen. Can you help me find it? Do you see it? Here it is, all aglow, happy Halloween. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna tell you about a super easy craft you can do at home. All you need is a piece of paper, a pencil, some scissors, and then something to decorate your ghost's face with. If you didn't want to make a ghost, that's okay. You can turn this into several other Halloween objects, like a pumpkin, or a snake, or a dragon. There's no wrong answer. So let's get started. First, get your blank piece of paper and a pencil. It's a little better to do this with a pencil instead of a marker or a pen, because if you make a mistake, you can erase it. We're gonna draw a swirl design, starting in the middle of our paper. So swirling, swirling, swirling. Once you've filled up most of your paper, it's time to design your ghost body. So at this point, we're gonna go up, draw some little arms and a big ghost head, and then some other little arms, and then connect it to our swirl. So it kind of looks like a ghost snail. And now it's time to cut it out. Ta -da! And now it's time to use your markers, your crayons, or your colored pencils to make a ghost face. Boo! You can make your ghost happy or scary, sad or mad. There's no wrong way to do it. Boo! 
Well, thanks for joining me for stories today, friends, and I hope that you have a very happy and safe Halloween. If you end up making our craft, we would love to see pictures of it. You can post it as a comment to this video, email it to us at pleasanthills at einetwork.net, or add it to our special Facebook group, Pleasant Hills Library Virtual Programming. Speaking of pictures, we would also love to see pictures from your Halloween. No matter what you end up doing, we'd love to hear from you. But now, friends, it's time for us to say goodbye. So look around and find somebody or someone to hug. Are you ready? The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Bye, friends. Happy Halloween.